Welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue to work on the tower expansion. And uh, then we're going to do some miscellaneous tasks. Uh, there are two research tasks that we're going to do. And actually, there's another one that we're going to do first. It's a small UI, uh, a small UI change or a small UI feature, I mean. Um, Yeah, but first let's uh, let's recap what we've done last stream. Yeah, so um, here let's play the game. Let me get OBS back in the screen. Yeah, so last time um, we've worked a bit on the on the graphics of the game. So first of all, um, we've made the we've made the weapons. Some some actually well, there are dummy models for the weapons. Um, we're gonna replace them with uh, with uh, with different models, but uh, uh, yeah, for now we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use those uh, for 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 testing purposes. Uh, we've made the the render for the path, so we have this uh, beautiful line right now, and also we have a line surrounding the weapons to know uh, the area uh, the area of effect of uh, of, of uh, each weapon. And uh, one last thing, uh, whenever you finish uh, a level, uh, you are given the opportunity to expand your tower, and by pressing the button, basically you create a new piece of the tower on top of what was already existing so now you when you, when you start uh, when you start the level the enemies are going to start from the new piece of the tower which uh, in this case it's right here so here you go so this is a new level theoretically we don't have anything to do with the with the with the tower uh, below only the new part and let's put a laser somewhere let's put it here actually that didn't help but yeah, so th so this is the new the new um, yeah this is uh, this is uh, what we worked on uh, last time the the expansion of the tower and I think that's yeah that that covers everything and there were some other so this actually those are the um, the features for runtime but there's one other feature that we've done which is uh, for the editor not for the not for the game itself so if you go into a module or um, a tower module and we click on the weapon slot uh, I've made it so we can uh, preview a uh, uh, so we can preview all the weapons in the in the editor so you can choose let's say I want to debug the laser weapon so here we go I chose this weapon and I can enable the gizmos for it. Actually, the whole model is loaded, but basically that's the idea that you have the you have the gizmos here and uh, you can see uh, that uh, that you've uh, put the um what do you call it? The the, the weapon slot is uh, put in a correct spot so it uh, so so the weapon can reach the uh can reach the path. And you can test uh, all the weapons that uh, that we have available in the game. And if you don't need it, you can just disable it, and uh, and it's gone. And yeah, so so those are the those are the things that we've done last time. And uh, today we're gonna continue a bit on this uh, on the on the uh, tower expansion stuff. But first, uh, let's see. So here are the the tasks that we're gonna work on today. There's not a lot. There's more more research to be done, but um, there are two tasks that we're gonna do. So first of all, I want to to add a pause menu, or actually not not necessarily a menu, but just something on the screen to 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 indicate that the that the game is paused, because we have the functionality. So whenever you're in play mode, you can press escape, and the game stops, and you can't even. Uh, uh, do anything you can't rotate around the tower or do anything and you can press escape again and uh, get back so I'd like to to show something on the screen to, to signify that um, 
yeah, the game is paused and you have to press escape to to go back. So that's what gonna that's what we're gonna work on first. And after that, we're gonna um, add uh, add a new functionality to the to the tower expansion. So whenever you expand the tower, uh, you'll be given some uh, some exp uh, some upgrade coins. So uh, we have the uh, when you're in the game, you can uh, upgrade different stats. So for example, right now we only have implemented the tower health. So you can upgrade your uh, the, the the health of the, uh, uh, the the max health of your tower. And right now it's hooked to the to the normal coins that you get by uh, by killing the enemies. But um, uh, uh, the upgrades should actually be uh, available only for or only using the the separate coins, which are the upgrade coins. And those coins you you can only get when you when you expand the tower. So that's one thing, and the other is um, whenever you um, you build something uh, on the tower. So let's say I put this laser, and it costs ten coins. Uh, what we want to do is whenever you let's wait for this to to happen. So whenever you expand the tower, what we want to do is uh, give you back all the money that you've spent and a little bit extra. So you have enough money to to rebuild your weapons on the new on the new um, on the new part of the tower. So what we'll have to do is um, keep track of all the man uh, all, all the money or all the coins that we've spent during uh, during a level. And when we finish the level, we're gonna uh, give it back to the player with like. Uh, a little bit extra, like something like 20% or something like that. And um, yeah, that's basically the feature. You'll be able to to start uh, um, uh, recreating your weapons on the new piece of the tower. And after that, um, we're going to do uh, two research tasks that I think would be interesting to, to, to look at. So first of all, there's a new feature in the localization package from Unity, and I want to check it out. Um, this is something that we're already using, uh, mainly the, the, the variables, but um, they have a new thing called local variables, which are local to the to the localized string component, and I want to see how that works. Maybe we can uh, we can use it in the game. And the other thing is I want to look a bit at Pro Builder and uh, see if we can create. Uh, the the tower modules using it um we have some ideas of how to make the the tower modules more interesting and it would be a lot easier to use pro builder directly in unity instead of using uh, something else like uh, 3ds max or or blender it would be much 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 more easier to to work from within unity so we'll have to look into that but yeah, so yeah, first we're gonna start with the with the pause menu. So um, let's uh, start a timer and see how we're gonna do this. So what I know for sure is we're gonna add something to the to the game UI. So let's create a, an empty game object. Let's call it let's call it pause menu, and let's make it cover all uh, the, the, the entire screen okay uh, actually let's let's visualize this so let's go on 2d okay so this is it we're gonna add a backdrop so actually I should have yeah so we're gonna have an image we're gonna make it black and a little bit transparent let's say maybe 25 and again, we're gonna make it uh, take over the whole screen, like so. Actually, should it make it? Let's put it at uh, at 50% uh, transparency. Okay, so that should be that should be it. And one other thing, I want to add. Let's add uh, an image directly. Uh, Let's 
we're gonna add uh, we're gonna add an icon uh, in the middle of the screen. Um, let's search for a pause icon, maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Uh, looks okay. Let's uh, preserve aspect ratio. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. It's it it doesn't look actually that great because um, the image shouldn't be that uh, this big. Or the, or the the icon was not meant to be this this big, but uh, it's good for now. So we're gonna keep it. And what we need right now is somehow hook it to the to the pause um, or to the lifecycle service actually. Um, first, let's see if we do have some events for this. So. Yeah, we don't have anything for pause and pause and play. So yeah, we're gonna hook it directly to the um, to the lifecycle service. So let's do that. Let's go to where should we go? Do we have an UI? Yeah, we do have something for UI. Let's go to runtime. Um, what is this? This should be inside the... Really sure this should be inside the runtime folder. So let's move it right now. Let's say runtime here. Runtime. Yeah, okay. That was unrelated, but uh, yeah, it should be like this. So let's see, what should we call it? Um, Something like this should do it. It's gonna be a mono behavior and lifecycle service. We're gonna need the reference to the lifecycle service. Let's make this serialize field uh, and we're gonna hook to it on start. So lifecycle service dot. Um, I should change this though. Um, I need to add a listener for playing. And let's create a method on play. Let's duplicate. Let's say this on pause. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is something um, quite simple. We're gonna add to the pause menu, we're gonna add a canvas group. And let's see. Yeah, uh, so private canvas group. Um, let's call it pause menu. Oh, God damn it. Let's make this a serialized field. And here we're going to say uh, on play the alpha is going to be 1. And it's going to be interactable. But actually, I don't care about interactable, but blocks raycast should be true. But it doesn't matter if it's interactable if block uh, blocks request is false. Uh, we're not going to see it anyway. So, and on pause, we're going to make it. Oh no, actually no. Uh, on pause, we want to we want to show it, and on play, we're going to uh, hide it. So it should be like this. And let's do one other thing. On destroy, let's uh, remove the listeners. Like this, and this should do it. Let's add a component and see if it works. Add component, uh, pause menu manager. Uh, we need a canvas group and the lifecycle service. Uh, let's remove it by default and let's play the game.
Yep. So now whenever I press escape, we have this on the screen. So that's awesome. So now we, we know for sure uh, that uh, the game is paused and uh, that's why we can't uh, interact with it. Because I, I had this problem uh, before I, I accidentally pressed escape and I didn't know why I was not able to to move around the tower. So this is actually uh, a very good indicator. Even though we're going to change it in the future because we're going to add a proper menu here, but for now it's good enough. So let's uh, let's keep this and let's stop the timer and commit those changes. And then we're going to go to, to the, next, uh, the next task. Uh, we don't care about this. This is a feature. Yeah, the code looks okay, so there's nothing to. Yeah, let's publish. Okay. Now we can move on to the to the next task, which is which was the the one with the recouping the money from from a level, the money that we've spent. So yeah, as I said, we need to somehow keep track of all the money that we've spent. So I wonder where we should we should do this. I'm not entirely sure where we should do this because we have a place where we store all the money that we have, which is the economy manager, or we access it through the to the economy manager. We actually keep the money in the economy manager data and we can also see it at, at runtime uh, I didn't want it to go into full screen okay so let's see if you go into playground uh, economy manager data here we go so here we have the info about our our currency so we have the so this is the, the currency, the, the type of currency, this is the amount of this currency, and this is an it is a variable in, in which we write the value in case you want to use it in the UI. So now I'm wondering, because the economy manager is the one responsible responsible for adding and removing the currency from the from the player. So I'm wondering if we should do the, uh, this tracking in here. Um, probably this is the place to do it, I guess. I don't, I don't see, I don't see who else would keep track of all the, all, all the money that is, that is spent. Because we want to keep track of all the all the coins that are spent so yeah hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna add it here. What we're gonna do, so... If we add it here, we have to make it in a generic way. So so here, in the in the economy manager, we don't dif uh, differentiate between currencies. So we don't know, right now, um, let me show you actually. We have two types of currencies. Which is one of uh, one is coin currencies, which is uh, yeah the, the the coins that we we use right now, and uh, the other one is the Abu coins, which we're gonna implement in this task. Uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna implement them now. 
but the but the economy manager doesn't care doesn't know actually uh, which which coins he's dealing with i mean it it kind of knows because we we're giving it uh, a reference to a currency but it doesn't know if this is a coin currency or if this is a this is another type of currency so what i think i'm going to do is here where we define the the, the coins that we have or actually uh, it's easier to visualize here economy measure data so here so this is the this is one of the currencies that we have which are, which are the coins i think i i'm going to add a uh, a checkbox here oh uh, wrong click or i'm going to add a checkbox here which uh, basically tells the um one second i'm gonna be right back Okay, sorry for that. I had to to check um, to check a message. Okay, so um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, I'm gonna add a checkbox to the to the to to this uh, to um, to each currency that's defined here, which basically says that uh, it basically says to the economy manager, please keep track of. How much, uh, how much of this currency is spent, and save it somewhere. And I'm gonna tell you when you can give the money back to the player. Basically, that 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 would be the idea. And and yeah, we're doing that with the checkbox, uh, as I said, because um, we don't we don't want to differentiate in the code between um, the different types of coins. Hello, X Chrome. Thanks. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so let's start. Let's start working on this. Let's add that uh, checkbox. Actually, let's first um, let's open this. Uh, yeah, here. So, so this is the the thing that we're going to modify. And let's add that checkbox uh, checkbox here. So. Yeah, we're going to add it here. So we're gonna make a private private bool. Um, hmm, what should be a name? A good name for this? Something like this. Track spending. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't have a better name for this, so we're gonna keep it like so. It's gonna be false by default. Uh, it's gonna be a serialized field. And what else? What else? Uh, we need to. Actually, no. We can make it. Uh, we can make it a. Um... No, we can make it public. Because we're only we only have access to this inside the inside the economy measures. It doesn't matter if it's public. Uh, we know for sure no one's gonna modify it from the code. So so we're good. And so we have to change the name like so. And what else? Yeah, uh, we'll need to do one other thing, which is uh, I'm going to copy this or Oh, OK, that's an wait a second.
Okay, this doesn't work. Okay, I've seen something that that, that doesn't work. Um, but as a matter right now, um, we're gonna fix it later. Actually, let me let me make a task real quick so I don't forget about this. And we're gonna come back to it uh, later or maybe in another stream. Um, let me see. Uh, how should I word this? Um, either as data for the economy manager. So this is a bug, and we're gonna throw it in the in the backlog because it's not important right now. Okay. Anyway, um, what we need right now is I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna call it like so. Uh, I'm gonna remove this. And this one is gonna extend. Uh, yeah. And this is gonna be protected. Cool. But actually, no. I can actually no. No, no. I have to keep it here because I need the amount UI here. Yeah. <sighs> but then again. I might need uh God damn it. Yeah, I don't think I need a checkbox now that I think about it. I can do it in another way without needing the checkbox. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get rid of the checkbox. Let's undo everything that we've done, and I'm gonna explain in a second why we don't actually need it. Okay, so here, So basically, we're gonna have two arrays. That was the that was the uh, the idea initially, also. But um, yeah, so so what we're gonna do is so we have the currency info, and what this is is what's the actually uh, currency of the player right now. So what what coins does he have, and how much uh, from uh, from each one. And this tracked currency info, which um, actually I might rename it to spent currency. Spent currency info. What this is gonna hold is um, basically how much. In this example, how much coins has uh, the player spent at any given time? So, and yeah, oh, yeah. So, so basically, here, whenever I so let's say I build a laser which costs ten coins, uh, the game is gonna subtract ten coins from my from my amount from from here, and that's, and it's basically gonna add it here. And um, what we're gonna do is, if uh, let's for uh, let's say for example that I have also upgrade coins. Let's say I give myself five upgrade coins by default. Uh, I'm not gonna add it to the spent currency info. 
and whenever I, I I do anything with the with the upgrade coins, uh, I'm gonna check if I also have it in the spent currency info. And if I don't have that type of currency defined here, I'm not gonna track it. So I'm not gonna because because I don't have anywhere to put it, you know. Yeah. So basically, yeah, instead of having a checkbox, I actually look inside the inside the, the array and check for that currency if it's present or not. And that would uh, basically tell me the same thing that the that the um, um, the same thing that the that checkbox was telling me. And the great thing is, I can use the same data type because is this I, I I'm gonna store the exact same thing inside both of them. So yeah. So let's do some setup here. I'm gonna do this. And also, we're gonna uh, why we why we're using the same data type is because I actually need everything, including this amount UI that that we have here defined. Um, cause I'm probably going to want to show the amount of money that the player is going to make. I, I might want to show it in the, in the UI. Okay. Okay, so this is done. Let's go to the economy manager. And when we add currency, we're not gonna do anything. But when we remove currency, this is where we're gonna do stuff. So, um, let's duplicate this. Get spent currency info. We are using first or default, so it's gonna give us null in case in case it doesn't find it. So that's that's awesome. And here, um, what we're gonna do is get spent currency info currency if this is not null oh, wait a minute. if this is not null we're gonna we're gonna add this uh, the amount that we've uh, that we've spent we're gonna add it to this so this should theoretically work and one last thing that we need is, let's see, um, is a way of of getting uh, the money from the spent currency info back into the back to the player. So we're gonna make uh, such a method right now. So public uh, void um, currency. Return uh, spent currency. We're gonna supply a, or should we supply a multiplayer, or should the economy manager know about the multiplayer? I feel like the economy manager should know about this multiplayer. Yeah, I'm gonna add it to. Yeah, it's gonna be inside the, inside the economy manager. Or, hmm. What I'm wondering right now is if we would want the same multiplier throughout the game or if we want to increase the multiplier after each level. So maybe, um, for example, for the first level you're gonna get plus 10%, for the second level you're gonna get plus 15% and uh, so on and so forth. Not sure if you wanna do that, we'll have to talk about that, but... Uh... Yeah, for now I'm gonna keep it on the on the economy manager. So let's 
so let's add it here it's gonna be a float um, gonna be one by default and we're gonna modify it uh, but here what are we gonna do is for each uh, what is it called uh, data something right underscore data dot spent currency info currency info Actually, let's call it spent currency angle. Wait a minute. Get currency info. Spent currency info dot currency. Currency info dot amount plus equal spent currency info dot amount. And spent currency amount gonna be zero. There we go. And oh, and let's not forget about the multiplayer. And uh, let's see, we're gonna do a math floor here. Why not? Uh, yeah, math of floor to int. Uh, not flo floor to int. My bad. Floor to int, yeah. Let's add a button to this. And that should do it. That should do it. Let's add a space here. And where is the... Actually, no. Let's add property space 8 and 8. I want to add space uh, below it as well. Hello. Cryptic hybrid. Yeah, sure. Um, let me fire up the prototype and I'm gonna show it real quick. But first, let me um, let me put some music. Let's see what should we listen to. Um, let's do some shine down. Yeah, let me fire up the, the the prototype and I'm gonna explain it on that. Here we go. Should take just a while. So basically, until until the the, the, the project is uh, starting. So so basically, the uh, Project Tower is a tower defense game with uh, the twist that instead of playing on a on a um, flat map, you're actually playing on an actual tower. So let's see. Yeah. So this is. This is the prototype for the game that we've made, uh, like, I don't know, half a year ago or something like that. So you have multiple paths, or uh, actually, first of all, you have the tower and you can move around the tower. You have uh, multiple paths for the enemies to, to climb the tower. And uh, what the enemies are trying to do is reach the, the crystal on top and try to destroy it. Exactly, the, the enemies are going to climb the tower. And, uh, yeah, as a uh, as with any other tower defense games, you create weapons. Um, and, um, yeah, the, the weapons are going to kill the enemies and are going to give you um, some money back to create even more weapons. Or uh, you can also upgrade the weapons so here is a, a a weapon of level one and i can just uh, increase the level and make it more powerful and uh, also we have you have the the ability to to shoot the enemies yourself so so you have the weapons as passive weapons you, you know you don't have to do anything with them they just shoot but you can also use, come on, let's have an enemy. You can also use um, what we call Zap, which is one of the powers you're going to have in the final game. 
and you can click on enemies and damage them little by little. But uh, yeah, this is basically the game. Um, one thing that we don't have here, and I'm I'm, I'm going to show it in the, not in the prototype, but in the in the actual game, which is not yet finished, uh, is that after a couple of waves, you'll be able to expand the tower. So so this is one part of the tower, but after a couple of waves, you'll be given the opportunity to expand the tower. And basically, it's like a, it's like how it works in a, in a uh, in a classic tower defense where we where you have different maps. Uh, but in our case, instead of having different maps or different towers, um, we're actually just uh, constructing the a new piece of the tower right on top of the uh, of the old one. So let me show let me show you that functionality in our uh, let me see. Yeah, the, the code compiles, so it should be fine. So here is the game in. Yeah, in. Yeah, what we have right now in the. In the not in the prototype, but the actual game. Um, so yeah, this is basically what we what you saw previously with some couple added things. But. As you can see, um, so so we had a wave. Right now, it's only one wave defined for this first level. But because the wave was was finished, um, you you are given the the opportunity to expand the tower. And when I click this button, what's happening is I just created a new piece of the tower right on top of the other one. And now, right now, the battle is going to continue on this piece of tower. So instead of the enemies, uh, where was it? Actually, I don't know where where they will be spawning right now. I think somewhere around here. No, uh, I got it wrong. Oh yeah, so this basically this is the place where they're spawning right now in the in the middle of the tower. But yeah, that's the idea. You'll be you'll be given basically a new playing field after each uh, after each uh, level you play. And yeah, you can place weapons. They're gonna attack the enemies. Right now we don't have an end game, so even though you reach zero health, uh, nothing's gonna happen. But uh, we're gonna work on that some other time. And yeah, you have different types of, types of weapons. You can speed up the game if you wanna, if you don't wanna wait for for the enemies to come. Actually, I've kind of put an overpowered uh, weapon there and nothing's going to pass that weapon. Well, yeah, here we have a projectile weapon. You can kind of see the projectiles shooting the enemies. Yeah, so, yeah, basically this is the, this is the, the state of the game right now. But basically that's the idea. It's, uh, it's a tower defense, but you play on an actual tower. Oh, I have expanded the tower, so I have to go up here to see the new enemies. Yeah, there we go. Here you can see better the the projectiles. All the graphics, all the graphics in the game are um, are not finalized, so don't look too much into it. But yeah. And right now, what what I was working on is, whenever you expand the tower, what we want to do is um, basically give you back all the money that you have spent on the previous part of the tower, with with a little bit extra, so you can recreate your weapons or maybe try something else on the new piece of the tower that you've just uh, that you've just uh, expanded. So yeah, let's get back to this. 
hope you've made an idea of what uh, what this game is about and what will come out of it. So yeah, we're gonna track the coins currency and let's add the upgrade currency here as well. Let's add five. Yay. I have to, yeah, I have to change this. Actually, I'm not gonna add the. What should I? Ah, fuck it. Let's add the, the upgrade coins. Um, even though I might change them, in a in a future task. So, upgrade coins amount. There we go. Come on, compile. Move it coins amount. Save this. Let's go here. Um, on the text. Do we have... Yeah, we do have a localized string. We have to add a... Let's add the coins for now and let's edit the table and let's add the upgrade coins. Upgrade coins. It's gonna be smart. Save this. Let's change this to upgrade coins, like so. Let's do the setup for actually showing. No, not this. No, no, this is setup. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's gonna update the text. That's nice. And the only other thing that we need to do is. Um, set up the variable so it's gonna be an integer a bitcoins amount is gonna be zero by default let's save and let's play we should get a five in here yep everything is working correctly we have a five in there okay now let's look at the economy manager data and see if this is working as expected it's expected. So we're gonna add a laser here to the to the first part of the tower. So we've spent 10, co uh, 10 coins, and as you can see, uh, we've transferred those coins to the spent currency info here. So that that looks correct right now. So right now I'm gaining coins, which is correct, but I'm I, I still maintain those spent currency coins here. And what we can do right now is go back to the can we make let's make a properties for the economy manager and actually we can also never mind we can see the data in here as well so what i should be able to do right now is click on return spent currency and the coins that we have right here should be uh transferred to to my basically inventory let's say there you go so now it's zero and actually we killed something but the, but the money was transferred, that's the idea. So now theoretically all there's left to do is um, call this return spent currency method from the tower expansion, whatever that is. So this is the button that does the expansion. Um,
but let's see how this works. I think I'm. Oh, Tarek. Okay. Yeah. So there is an event. Expand the tower. So let's get this in here. Uh, no, uh, the object inspector. Yeah, so the button triggers this event. And this event goes here. And this just triggers a lot of stuff. Trigger tower builder, trigger current level stop, trigger left level start. So now I'm thinking where I should add this, um, the stuff with the economy manager. Let's look a bit at the code of this. So let's do an edit script and see what's happening here. Wait, no one's calling continue? What's this? Why? There should be a button that calls continue. Shouldn't there be? Is this defined? Uh, no, only in the... In this scene is used. Hmm. I don't remember how I've, how I've uh, made this. That's not good. Okay, so the when the when this event is triggered, we're gonna call this method, which is this. First, we're gonna build the tower. Then we're gonna stop the level. But no one calls continue. Do we not need continue? It could be that we don't need it. Or, or that we've done it some other some other way. So let's go to the tower expansion here in the UI. Oh, no. We are going to the start level button. Yeah, this is what we need. So what's happening here? Yeah, when I click on this, I trigger. Okay, so basically, I don't need this. Apparently, I don't need this. Okay, so we have some uh, unused code here. Um. But I'm still thinking, where should we add that uh, that part? Where should we? Yeah, I think here is a place. In yeah, the tower expansion manager. So first, it's gonna do, and I'm I, I might uh, remake this a bit. But this would be the place for sure.
Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna change this a bit. So first of all, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. We are gonna unify those two uh, unity events. Because there's no reason to keep them separate. So let's see. So uh Let's call it trigger expand. Why not? Um, I'm gonna keep them around just so that I can. But I have to buy any keyboard. Um, yeah, let's keep it like this to expression body. Yeah, let's see what's happening here. Let's look code compile and see what we need to do. Come on, do it. Okay. So we have to add two of those things. We first have to build a tower, so it, which is this. We're gonna have to trigger this event. And the second is, yeah, stop the current level. Trigger this as well. And the third thing is, um, let's get the economy manager here. So this, and we're going to call return spent currency. That should do it. And now we can get rid of those two unity events. And this should be everything. Let's see. And this should work. Uh, this should work the same as it did previously. So uh, we should be able to expand the tower. And on top of that, we should be able to get some money. Okay, so let's make this weapon, which is costing us five uh, coins. Let's wait for the wave to finish. So the wave is finished. So now, if I if I expand the tower, I should get my five coins back. Because even though we've implemented the multiplier, the multiplier is still one. So I'm gonna and and we have the coins here, so so you can see them that we've actually tracked them. So now when I click on expand tower, bam! There we go. We got our coins back. We got our coins back. That is awesome. Cool. Now we can play the game. Let's start a game. Let's spend some more money. Let's put more projectile weapons. And see how do we recoup our money. Why is this laggy? That's interesting. I wonder why. If, oh, why is it lagging? Now this is profiler. Actually, I should have paused it, not stopped the recording. But what the hell is going on here? Okay, the major the majority of the problem is coming from the editor loop. What? And I can't see what's happening in the editor. That's that's awesome. Oh, it might be because of the yeah. I know why. Let's uh, start recording again. I think it's because of this. Yep. As soon as I disabled Gizmos, uh, we got our frames back. And theoretically, if we maximize this, we should get even more frames. Yeah, there we go. 300 frames per second. Yeah. Now, this is smooth. Cool. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, let's get out of uh, maximize. And let's wait for the wave to finish.
yeah so now we can ex we can expand the tower again and we should get our 20 coins back there you go and now let's try it again but with a multiplayer let's say that i want um 20% back so let's play this uh, let's put one weapon down. Actually, let's put two weapons down. One here and one here. So, so I, so there are. I spent ten coins. So now I should get back ten coins plus twenty percent, which would be two coins. So twelve coins total. And we did. We got back our ten coins plus two extra. So yeah, so the system works. We get back uh, our money that we we've, we've spent. And a little bit extra for the next uh, for the next part of the tower. The last thing that we that we need to add is let's close the profiler. The last thing that we need to add is a way of gaining um, upgrade coins. And I think we're gonna add because 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 the uh, the upgrade coins we're gonna get um, right when we expand the tower. So I think we're gonna go to let's see. Actually, no, we have the levels editor. So yeah, currently the level doesn't have any anything set on it. So I think I'm going to add here um, the the amount of upgrade coins that we're going to get from this level. Yeah, but actually now that I think about it, I'm... Um... Yeah, so, so, so what I have to do is whenever I finish the uh, level and I expand the tower, I have to give the player some upgrade coins. And I can give I can give it to him. Uh, the thing is, I have to keep track of... Uh... Okay, no, so, so le le let's take it another way. Um... The coins, so, so so you can die in the game. When when you, the enemies manage to 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 destroy your crystal on top, or, or basically reach zero health, uh, you're gonna die. So you're gonna basically lose the game, and you will have to start over. Uh, but the upgrades that you're gonna get and the upgrade points that you have are permanent. So even though you you've lost and you've lost all your coins or your uh, your regular coins and uh, all the weapons that you've built, the upgrade coins and the upgrades that you've already bought using the the upgrade coins, those you're gonna keep throughout all the all the playthroughs that you that you'll have. So what, and as I said, you, you'll get the the coins after each level. But what we don't want to do is, if we already gave you coins for a level. And then you die and restart the game. We don't want you to to receive coins again when you play that same level. So somehow, somewhere, we have to save that we've actually, we've actually gave you the, the the coins for a specific level. So I was think what I was thinking right now is where should I save this? Because because. Um, initially, I was thinking of uh, putting this functionality in the in the economy manager, but uh, 
given that I have to do this with uh, with this checking and saving this data, it's not uh, it's not a good uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea anymore to put it in the economy manager. So I might have to to invent a new place for this specifically for this. And I'm not sure what that place should be called. I mean, I can just go with. Actually, we do have. We do have an upgrade ma upgrades manager. I might add it here, though. I might add it here. Because here we're already saving. The, the the upgrades that you've bought and the, the the level for each upgrade and I might be able to add it here but no it doesn't I mean no no I, I'm not gonna keep it here no I think I'm gonna make something like upgrade coins manager or something like that where I take care of this, keep track of what le at what levels I've already um, uh, given the the, the, the player its uh, its upgrade coins, and as a place from where I I actually gonna give him the the coins when when he finishes the level. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so let's make this. And now the question is, where should I add it? I think I'm gonna keep it in the in this upgrades folder. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Something like this. This is gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be a service. Uh, we have to do some. See loaded. We don't care about this right now. Actually, no, I have to remove this. Um, um Actually, I don't think I'm able to make this a service. I have to make it a mono behavior, which I don't quite like. I mean, I can separate this, but 
yeah, I may have to come back and do some refactoring here. But that's gonna happen some some other time. But yeah. Yeah, we can make this a service. So we'll have to add it to the scene, which is not quite my liking, but whatever. Okay, so this is gonna be a mono behavior and what do we do? Actually not even this should be ah damn this kind of hmm Ah, oh, then this is gonna be annoying to make. I might just uh, drop this and do it another time. It might be boring for me to just stay and think about this um, on the stream. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make another task for this, for, for the upgrade coins and just do it some other time. Yeah, so I'm not sure actually that this is the, the, the best idea with the Upgrade Coins Manager. But we'll see, yeah. Well, I'm gonna make another task and come back to it uh, some other time. And do some more research for it. Yeah, so let's stop the timer for this task. Let's create the other one. So... The task, let's create another one. Earn upgrade coins when the tower expands. We're gonna throw this in the backlog. It's gonna be a feature and it's gonna be in the programming tab. Okay, so we have this. Okay. Let's see what we've changed for this task and then we're going to move on to the next one. So we've added this multiplier, we've added the spend currency, we're doing the tracking and we have the, the method to which we recoup our money. We've added the new array here for the spend currency. Yeah. This is for the new variable for the UI. Yeah. This is a prefab asset asset. We don't care about the assets. Yeah, that's all the code that we need. Cool. Actually, no, there's something here that I've missed. What have I done here? Oh yeah, so I've uh, uh, cleaned this up a bit and also removed the unused code. Yeah. Okay. Let's commit this and go to our next so next task. Cool. So another task is done. Now there are only two two tasks left to do and both are for research so we're gonna look into some some things so the first one is uh, as i said this one we're gonna look at the new the new ver version of the localization package and see what's up with this uh, local variable uh, feature so let's track the time for this and do some upgrades package manager ah gonna take a bit come on in project where is localization and there we have it we have uh, yeah update to 103 please
Yeah, 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 I made a backup. Sure, do it. Yeah, they, they've automatically uh, updated some code inside a file of mine. Damn. Um, let's see this. So here, uh, close all you know, close other tabs. Um, let's say that we're using this. Ah, damn, that's annoying. Yeah, so they've, uh, they've, um, named their variables the same as I did in my, in my framework. Which is not that cool. But I can do this, at least. So I should be able to do this. No, I can't. Okay. Okay. That's not cute. Anyway, uh, we're going to keep it like this for now. Uh, there are some compiler issues that I don't know what I don't know what those are about. I may have to restart Unity because this looks weird. Let's look at the manifest for a bit and see. Yeah, only that changed. That's awesome. Let's look at the packages lock. The addressable have changed. Okay. The localization package has changed as expected. Oh yeah. So so this so the the localization package uh, made the addressables update. This I don't care about. Okay. Actually, now that, now that actually we're doing this, is there anything else I can upgrade? Uh, only addressables to a newer version. Yeah, let's let's actually update the addressables to the latest version. So, so we're good on that. Okay, and we're still having the uh, those errors. Or actually, are there errors? Yeah, those are, those are errors. Okay, let's close Unity and start it again and see if we can get rid of those errors. Otherwise, we might uh, not be able to test this. But I'm pretty sure it's because of the, of the upgrade and not because of something broken inside the package. Okay, looks fine now. There you go. I knew it was it was just a, a stupid problem. Cool. So now let's look at the local variables. Let's see what are those about and how how we can use them. Let's go to let's go to the upgrade coins for example. But the, we've made this. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay. So local variables. I can use a localized string. Now that's interesting. Oh, that is actually very interesting. Interesting. Actually, well, yeah, maybe actually. 
change. Come on, let me select this. I want to delete it. Um, let's add a. Uh, it would be an integer, I guess. Let's call it amount. Let's. Ah, okay, so I can set it right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The question is, how do I use them? Um, so let's get the um, the documentation so we can see how we can use the local variables. I'm assuming I can write something like local here, maybe, or I don't know, something like that. But we shall see. Um, where would that be? Where would that be? Wait, oh no, this is, those are addressables. I don't care about addressables. No, let me. Uh, Unity, not this Unity. This Unity. Um, localization, open documentation. Okay, so scripting API. Actually, no. Maybe the manual is the better. Hmm. Here. Smart string, maybe. Sources. Sure. You have persistent variables, but I want just. Okay, local variables. That's what I want. How do I use them? Ah, so I just write the name as is. It's just gonna. Uh, uh -huh. Interesting. So the thing is, if it works as they say it does. What I can do then, hmm. one other thing, how do I set it? How do I set a value? It doesn't say, but I can find out. If it's not here, it should be. No. I don't care about this. Okay, uh, this is mm, not interesting, no. So we have to find out how do we set the local variables. So let's look for the localized string class. There we go, localized string. And we should we should have a way of setting those variables. So let's call for local localized string with local variables. That's not actually that interesting. But here are the the variables or some variables. But what what I want to know is how do I change them? Um, let's call only for variables maybe. My group, dictionary. Okay, it might be easier to go from here, so. Let's go here. Come on, I can't look at the source code. I don't believe you. Oh, I really can't. Are you for real? Is the is the uh, source code not available? That would be a bit shitty. Uh, localization. Runtime.
Uh, list string. There we go. Okay. This sounds like something. Let's search for this in the file. Okay. This is how we can add it. Remove. But can I update it is the question. I mean, I might be able to just add it. Oh, I think I know. Let's look for... Although, actually, no, I know where to find those because uh, I can get them from here. Let's go to the float variable. Let's see how this works. It's just a variable of type float. Okay, I don't care. It has a value. Okay, that's what I care about. It's an i variable. Okay. Yeah, so so I think I, I I think I know how it works. You don't exactly change the value of the variable through the localized string, but actually you create a new variable in the code, and then you add it to the to the localized string, and then you save you you have to save the the reference to the to the variable, like let's say a float variable, and then you change the value in the float variable, and because the localized string knows about that that variable. Um, the UI is going to be updated, which is actually nice because I can make some extension methods for injecting values directly for my type of variables. Because I have, so, so in my framework, let's see that. So in my framework, if we, let's go, sorry, let's go to the UI. Yeah. Let's take upgrade coins for example. So I have this is a, this is a, an integer variable. So I might be able to match this with what they have, and well, let's see. So those are my variables: integer, float, and boolean. They have some others, uh, but we don't care about them. But I might I might be able to do this, where I. Uh, but I have a component, a, like a, a mono behavior that gets a a variable from yes framework, and it injects it into the localized string. But the thing is, I'm not. I mean, I could do it. I'm not sure if I want to do it that way. Because one thing that I like about the system right now, uh, which is uh, this game UI manager, one thing that I like about this is that okay, this is I, I may have to change some things actually. Uh, anyway, uh, one thing that I like, but that I like about this is that. Uh, I'm just defining some variables globally, and then I can use and I can use them wherever. Let's uh, let's get to a table and show that. Yeah, here we go. So I have defined the the variables in some other part of the system, and then I can just use them wherever I want. So yeah, I just refer to the health of the tower or the max health of the tower. And I don't care where this is set and whatever, and I don't care where I use this this uh, this this string this translation. So so what I think local variables are are good. But the it might it, they they might be easier to use when you want to do something quick. But if you're planning ahead with all the localization and stuff, I think it's easier to deal with global variables or use global variables. 
because you don't care about or mm. actually no they do, they do have their purposes because because actually no yeah no no you you i think you have to use them both because so so right now for me for me this is easy to to use because actually all the all the variables that i use in here in, in the in the in, in those translations or in these strings are actually global variables as in this is the the health of the tower which is a singular thing this is the wave cooldown which is a singular thing or the or the wave at which you are the coins and the upgrades coins but if we think about like the health of an enemy there might be like five enemies so you will have five different health but you would want to to show the uh the health of the enemy on the screen so i think i think that's where the the local variables come into play because here you would just define okay like i have here so you have enemy health slash max enemy health but then the data the actual data that, that is going to be injected uh uh in, in, the, in the place of those variables um, they'll be different for each enemy and they'll be injected locally in the localized string so so yeah for uh, for me right now I don't need local variables because I don't have uh, uh, those kinds of local like any use for any any local variables I, I only have global variables or global values that I need to use in the UI. But yeah, yeah, the, the, the local variables, they, they do have their their place for for stuff where you have multiple of multiple of something like like enemies. OK. Yeah. OK, so 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 I, so I get it. How, how, what's up with this and uh, but we, we don't need it right now uh, one thing that I'm gonna do though um, I'm gonna revert this to to the to the version we had previously um, because there are some errors that are destroying so I don't know what's up with this there might be it may be that I have to, to do some, some, some changes to how how do I get those and I don't want to do it right now but I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a task for this so for now I'm gonna just discard uh, the changes and create a task for actually upgrading the the localization package and do it some other time so let's stop the timer for the research um, Let's let's re write a, a small conclusion for this. So, so so in case I forget, I, I can just read this and remember what uh, what's the deal with the local variables. Okay, so one down, one to go. Uh, let's see if this is done. Yeah, it is done. Uh, actually, let's create a task for upgrading the localization package. And let's throw it in the backlog and let's put it on misc. Oh, 
cool. And we're uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna work on this next. Uh, but first, I'm gonna take a short break and come back, and we're gonna we're gonna do this. So see you in a few minutes.
Okay, I am back. Okay, so let's continue with this. As I said, we're gonna finish with this task. Uh, we're gonna look a bit at Pro Builder. Um, there is one feature in particular that I care about, which I've seen in a uh, in a video on YouTube uh, recently. Um, yeah, so let's see. I think I think uh, I already have, or do I? I might have Pro Builder. Yes, I do have Pro Builder. Cool. Yes, because I made the weapons uh, last stream, yeah. Ah, god damn it, I have to restart Unity again. Um, let's do that, I should have done that. Yeah, yeah, we have to restart Unity. Okay, so uh, let me explain with what I want to do. So, there's a feature in Pro Builder um, which lets you... Let's say you have two objects, you create a cube and a sphere. And what the feature allows you to is basically cut out, cut out a shape out from another. So basically the idea is I would like to be able to, to take a cylinder and just create objects and just take chunks out of the cylinder and like make, make holes in it or uh, maybe make uh, different stuff in it. Um, and obviously the, the, the cylinder I'm referring to is the, is the actual tower. So let's, um, let's create a new scene and let's play a bit in here. So yeah, let's make a simple scene. Actually, let's make, let's do it here. So 3D object, we're gonna make a pro builder cube. Let's reset this to zero. I set to zero. There we go. And actually, let's uh, let's open the Pro Builder window and let's create a new shape. Let's make a sphere. Let's make it with a lot more sides. Something like this. Okay, it is built. So what I would like to do is. So this is just a test, this is not something, I mean, it is something that we're going to use, but, okay. So basically, what I would like to do is, I have this cube, and I would I would like to carve out the area uh, in which it it uh, it's inter, uh, it intersects with the, with the sphere. So from what I saw, if I go to, okay, Tools, Pro Builder, I should have a... I don't really remember where I've seen that. Would it be an intersection? No. Object? No. Geometry? Okay, I should have saved. Okay, now this is stupid. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for something and I don't know where to find it. Should have been in editor. Shape editor menu item. No, it's not. Okay, so I don't know where to find that. Which is a bit... We, oh, I know. Let's go to the project settings. There might be something. Do we have some Pro Builder stuff here? Doesn't look like it. It might be in. I think I have to enable like an advanced feature for Pro Builder or something. Experimental feature. There we go. That's what we want. I remember now. Because this is not an. Yeah, they call it an experimental feature. I think. There might be some bugs with it, but as long as I can carve some objects out of other objects, that's uh, that's fine by me. Uh, let's uh, let's do this. Why not? Okay. So now 
when we go to tools, we should see experimental. Hey, there we go. The Boolean tool. So I want the I want the cube and I want to subtract the sphere from the cube and I want subtraction and I'm going to apply. And basically what this did it made it made a new object. Let's uh There we go. So it it made a new object and now as you can see it just carved out the the sphere out of the, the original cube but it did it did not do a great job as you can see there are gaps uh, so this I mean it is experimental so and we might not use it because of this but thankfully but actually, you know, this this could have been a use case that I I might have used, because uh, I've had some idea of how to make some damage to a to a to a cylinder like this. Mm -hmm. Let's try more examples. Let's close this. Let's keep that there. Let's make a uh, actually no. Let's go through here. Editors new poly shape. No, not poly shape. Uh, the other shape. Bezier? No. Wait, where is that? I... Shape editor. My bad. Let's make a cylinder. Uh, let's make it have. Let's make it be 20 meters high. Let's have it. Five meters in diameter let's have it like 64 sides that looks okay let's build it let's duplicate the cube and let's try to carve out a cube out of this uh, cylinder let's make the the cube bigger So first let's try to do it like this. So I would like to carve out like a hole through it. Uh, nope, that was good. I think Z, I want it to be zero. And the cylinder. Huh. Could this be f minus five? No, minus 2.5. Okay, that looks centered now. Okay. So let's open, uh, let's open the Boolean window, so I want the cylinder. Uh, I'm gonna drag the cube and I want subtraction again. So I'm gonna apply. It created a new object. So let's see how it looks. Yeah. Now this looks better. It looks like it has done a good job with this uh, on the on the edges. Oh god damn it. Uh, let's uh, center pivot, yeah. Yeah, but it yeah, as I said, it looks like it has done a good job with the with the edges on here. Not like it did with the with this cube. So I might be able to fix it up a bit in the using Pro Builder and make it a little bit better but so it might be insanity. So I think I might be able to just move this. I mean yeah, I can. No, no, this would be insane to to just try to fix this. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, so so it looks like simple uh, simple shapes. You can do that. So 
or something like this. Let's try, let's do two cylinders. Let's duplicate the cylinder. And let's duplicate this cylinder. Let's try to carve it like so. Why can't I drag stuff? Uh, hello? Okay. Uh, something seems wrong. I can drag I can drag elements from here. Let's save this scene for a sec and just try to reopen the scene. Let's just save it wherever. Okay, let's open a new scene. And let's open this back again. I still can drag stuff. What? What the hell is going on? Why can't I drag stuff? What is going on here? Why am I not allowed to drag stuff? Can I, uh, if I make a new scene, can I drag this? So is it something? Okay, no, the editor is, is screwed up. Let's try to reload the layout maybe. Nope. Okay, something's definitely screwed up with the editor. We might just have to reopen it. And that's not a good, actually, let's cancel this. This might not, wait, what? Now I can, okay. Apparently I just had to um, unfocus the window and focus it again. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try to carve this from this. As I said, I want to subtract, apply. And it's processing and it crashed. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is not usable. This is definitely not usable. Oh my god. Uh I think I just saw those enemies with like an <laughs> uh We've left this running for such a long time that the hello Mohan, that the the health of the enemy is just overflowed and just went back to zero. Uh, I mean to to negative to the negative part of the integer, like the minimum value of it of the of an integer. Anyway, getting back to our editor, let's try to open the project again. Yeah, so it was not happy with us uh, carving that cylinder out of that other cylinder. So, yeah, when they say it's experimental, I think they mean it. Because <laughs> I've seen it used, but there were uh, it was used in much more, um, what do you call it, a simpler context. Like carving out uh, boxes from other boxes uh, like that's simple but apparently it doesn't like that I wanted to carve a cylinder out of another cylinder oh yeah which is a use case that I actually intended to use oh god damn it yeah so Yeah, so 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 this is not a this is not a replacement for for Blender, because I think I can show you maybe no I might I might I might not be able to show you what I wanted to do. Uh, no, I don't think I can. I don't think I can easily. I'm I'm a noob, but at uh, doing stuff in uh, in Blender, but um, 
Let's give it a try. No, I want to scale it on like every axis. Can I? Yes, I can. Let's just do this. And I think on the cylinder, I have to go somewhere. Add modifier here. Uh, Boolean. Boolean. Cube. There we go. Yeah, it works. Now this is this is fast and it works great. Actually, we can. Now that I think about it, let's try to do. Can I duplicate this? I can't, but I can add another. Oh God damn it! Let's add another uh, cylinder. Let's rotate it. Uh, let's scale it. Oh, it's a bit crooked. Let's. Okay. So let's try it again. Let's add the the cylinder here, and let's click on the eye. Yeah, yeah. So this works flawlessly in Blender. Yeah. So this is what I would like to do. Uh, just be able to add different stuff to. Let's add another boolean. Can I add another boolean? Yes, I can. Can I add a cube? Yes, I can. Let's just move the cube. Uh, I can move it unless I have it like so, right? Yeah, there we go. Like this is a nice shape. So I like to be able to do to do stuff like this to to a piece of the tower and maybe do actually actually do more crazy stuff. Um, I can't duplicate this. Is that really not possible? Can I like I can't copy paste. There's no duplicate button, but I can copy paste stuff. Okay. Sure. Why not? Is this 90 degrees? No, it's not. This looks like 90 degrees. And this looks fine. Let's add two more booleans. Boolean and another boolean. Let's drag the cube here and the other cylinder here. Let's hide them. And now look at this. Look how pretty this looks. So this is this is the stuff the stuff that I would like to add to the game. So having those types of modules like have enemies crawl uh, through here, like right. be able to have enemy crawl through here, maybe split and go there, maybe go there and stuff like that. I was thinking about making the enemies be able to go, let's say they're coming through here and make them come through the tower and just go out the other side, you know. That would be interesting to actually go through the tower in some way. So, but yeah, this is what I was uh, trying to do with uh, with Pro Builder in Unity. But uh, I guess we're gonna stick with Blender for doing this type of stuff, which is not bad. I just didn't want it to. If I was able to do it with with Pro uh, Pro Builder in Unity, I will I would have done it because it's just easier to just have your only Unity open. But yeah, this is the type, the the kind of stuff that we'd like to do for for the tower, for the tower modules, have different type of modules like um, different uh, shapes uh, carved out of uh, cart, um, carved out of the tower. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's pl let's uh, stop the timer for this task. Let me show you what I was. Oh, 
Ne demek? One other thing that was not ideal in Unity with Pro Builder. Let's save this. So in uh, in uh, uh, in Blender, uh, those those Boolean operations are are not destructive. So I can uh, I don't know. If, if I can, can I disable it? Uh, I don't know if I can disable it somehow. I don't think I can. Yeah, but what I was trying to, to say is that I can always just come and just, okay, I don't want this. I don't want to carve it this cylinder. So just drop the modifier and I, then I just have this cube here. You know, the the original uh, the, the original model is never um, destroyed or modified. But in the case of Unity, that's not the case or not Unity, but uh, but but Progrid because you give it um, You give it two objects, or you create two objects, and then the result uh, from doing the subtraction is is another mesh. So if you wanna, let's say, I want to move this a bit higher. Uh, if I do the subtraction again, I would get a new a new object. Now I have to get rid of this and then replace it with a new one, and that would be, yeah, it would be a bit hard to do. So I was already thinking, in case this worked, I was thinking how I could make it easier for us to to have the fun this functionality, um, like be be automatic. Like okay, you you move this, move this, you press a button somewhere, and then uh, the module is just gonna update everywhere. Like update uh, the the prefab with the with the with the the, the prefab module automatically. But um, yeah. With this, we'll just be able to to update the model, the uh, yeah the, the 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 model file, and we'll just uh, Unity would just reimport it, and that would be it. But yeah. Yeah. So. Um... I think this is it for this stream. Let's do a, a small recap of what we've done today, and after that, uh, actually, let's first uh, let me first uh, get rid of those things from the project. So discard uh, changes. That's good. Yeah, so let's see what we've done. So first of all, we have the the dummy pause menu. So whenever you press escape, the this icon appears on the screen, so you know that the game is paused, and that's why you can't interact with anything. And the other thing is that um, when you create a weapon you are using coins and what we want to do is whenever you use coins and you expand the tower we want to give you back the coins that you've spent plus a little bit extra and the reasoning is um whatever you did previously you're not going to lose all the money or all the progress that you've made you're going to have your money back and you're you're going to be able to construct new and better weapons on the new piece of the tower 
So uh, yeah, that's the idea. You're not you're not gonna lose everything. So so you're not gonna you, you shouldn't be afraid to like you have a weapon and you're just gonna pour all your all your money into one single weapon. You don't have to to be afraid that okay now I've wasted all this money. I mean, in in the, in the sense that if you survive all the levels and you don't die, or not uh, all the waves, I mean, when you go to the next level, you're gonna get those uh, that money back from the from the weapon you've just had, or you uh, the the one that you've just uh, upgraded. So yeah, that's the that's the idea. And that's kind of it. Uh, except for this, uh, we've done some research tasks in the. I don't know, 40 minutes. So yeah, um, let's close this task. And yeah, that's kind of it. Um, there's gonna be a short break from streaming. So the next two weekends, uh, I won't do streaming because I'm not gonna be home. But we're gonna, I'm gonna come back um yeah in, in basically in three weeks and uh we're gonna continue working on the game and we'll see till then i'm gonna do some more planning on what we should do next and uh we're gonna see what we're gonna work on but uh yeah uh this is it for today thanks for being here and see you on the next stream Bye-bye.